Hi, everybody. Welcome to Vikings Now. I'm Jim Rich, along with Ahmad Hicks. And Ahmad, the Vikings doing something that everybody has been begging them to try mm -hmm. and fix, and that's upgrade the line. Yes, and they did yes. so this week. A big body, too. Dalton Reisner is coming in. He's a free agent currently right now. Well, not anymore because he just <laughs> apparently signed uh, with the Minnesota Vikings, according to NFL Network's Ian Rappaport. Uh, but he comes over from the Denver Broncos. Uh, he injured his elbow last year, so he hasn't been playing. He's been nursing that injury. Uh, but apparently he's, he's up to speed. He's ready to go. And when he does play, when he does step on the field, he is one of the best guards in all of football. I know you have your Zach Martins and all these other guys around the league, but Reisner, I think, will be a household name by the end of this season once he gets plugged into that Minnesota Vikings starting offensive line. Well, and I think the most exciting thing for fans should be that this guy apparently wanted to be here. Yeah, yeah. If you look at any of his social media, I mean, look, we can he's just go been through lobbying. We can go to Twitter right to get now, him. and every <laughs> like that this guy has on his page says something about the Minnesota Vikings and what whether he wants to do. He just tweeted out just now. Now, uh, Skull, so he's happy to be here, apparently. Uh, but every other tweet that you see on here, it's just crazy how we have all this space and Dalton Reisner should be in Minnesota. Like that tweet. Like He's been <laughs> yes. sending messages yes. to the Vikings like, look, sign me. So finally, it's a done deal. He doesn't have to tweet out pictures of scoreboard. I mean, um, flight itineraries and where he's going <laughs> yes. and everybody guessing here. So much need to help. I'm sure Kirk Cousins is thrilled. Now, I'm sure Ed Ingram and Ezra Cleveland, they're not so thrilled because one of them is about to lose a starting spot uh, to Reisner, but uh, everyone should be happy. The offensive line just got better. Well, they need depth, right? They we do. saw mm -hmm. Ole Udo go down on Thursday night, and uh, it, it's not looking good. He's not mm -hmm. going to be available this week, and who knows when he'll be back. But you need help anyways. Even yeah. if there were no injuries, mm -hmm. this unit needed yeah. some assistance. So... Do you like this? How much does this yeah. think help the running game, right? Because it's been non-existent the first two weeks of the year. And as much as Cousins is nominated every week for the FedEx <laughs> Air, 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 yeah. Air Player of the Week, you know, they're not going to live that way. He can't throw 700 yards every for week sure. to Ri get this team Riser's going. good. But is he going to be good enough to go handle three people in that middle of the interior defensive line? <laughs> Absolutely not. So he's still going to need some help from Gary Bradbury whenever he comes back or Austin Schlotman, who's currently starting right now, or Ezra Cleveland, Ed Ingram, whoever plays on the opposite side of him. And then, of course, Christian Derrissaw is going to need to come back from his ankle injury, and Brian O'Neill is going to have to live up to his potential and play up to the hype and be that right tackle that we all know he can be. So I think this is a start for that running game because, as we all know, Alexander Madison has not had any lanes to run the no. football. In. Every time he gets the ball, there's somebody in the backfield. So I think this will help. I don't think that this will be the ultimate problem solver, but I do think it will help solve some of their problems that they have and make sure that Kirk's not getting hit every single game like he is because he's on pace to get hit as much as he did last year. <laughs> yes. And I'm pretty sure he's on pace to get sacked as he did uh, as many times as he did last year. So I know if anybody's happy, it's Kirk Cousins right now. Yeah, and you look at what this team has right now going into a uh, – I said the Tampa Gay Bay game was a must-win sure. situation. Mm -hmm. They didn't win that one. This one is another one where they have to get something in the win column. Oh, you I, cannot yeah, start 0-3 and, and legitimately think, even though this division is starting to look like the uh, AL Central <laughs> that the Twins are playing in as far as everybody losing all the time, they've got to get some traction. You know, but I don't think it's going to be an easy week for the Vikings. You know, I know everyone around here is desperate for a win. I understand the urgency to win this week, but so does Brandon Staley and the Chargers because they yes. have more one-score losses. Did you see his post game on Sunday? Yes, he's when they up. were when they were talking about that playoff loss. For sure. and yeah, he's he, he has four straight exactly one-score losses. I feel like it's not just four straight. Every time you turn on the Chargers. You, it feels like they're losing in a one-score game, not just dating back to last year, but the year before that yes. and the year prior to that. So I think Brandon Staley knows his job is on the hot seat. You have a really good offense, Justin Herbert, Austin Eckler, Mike Williams, Keenan Allen. Like, you have some legitimate playmakers in that offense. So I think he understands the desperate need for a win is this week as well. So I think you have two really, really desperate ball clubs that both need a win, Minnesota in front of their home base. So they probably will play a little bit more desperate. But it's going to boil down to – defensively 
can Flores stop this team? Because I saw he's blitzing, I think, 50% oh, yeah. on yep. dropbacks. He, he, but he's only getting home 5% of the time. So he's blitzing a lot. He's being creative. He's trying to get his guys after the ball carriers. But it doesn't help when Marcus Davenport, a guy you paid $13 million, has only played four snaps this season. And he's probably not going to play next week uh, versus the Chargers because he could barely – get around the facility last week then they put him out there and he has a setback this past week so you're you're wasting a lot of money on defense in him so I don't think the offense will be all the problems you know moving forward I right. think the offense is they're throrong the ball they except just need the to stop turnovers turning. right Six fumbles that, offensively they'll clear that, that up it, exactly yeah. I'm not worried about no. all these turnovers like people are like oh my goodness this yeah. is just terrible they gotta be able to stop somebody exactly yeah and you know, we had Pete Bursich on uh, Vikings post game tonight this week, and he has been impressed with his defense. Yeah. He's just saying that against Philadelphia, they were out there for 40 minutes. Long time. Nobody is going to stop somebody when the offense just turns it right back over and you're right back on the field. And it was on like a that short, the Bucks on a short, the right, yep. on a short week, and you're back out there for 40 minutes. Mm-hmm. Those guys were gassed yeah, on that gassed. plane ride home. Now they have nine days to recover exactly. to get ready for the Chargers game. But I still think that when you look at the body of work from the previous two weeks, yeah, they were out there a lot. Yeah, they played a lot of snaps. But I don't care how tired you are, how tired you are. When you need a stop <laughs> on third down, bow up. Go get a stop. You're a grown man. You're making a lot of money, millions of dollars for a lot of these guys. I don't want to hear about fatigue. I don't want to hear about exhaustion. You just had the entire offseason to rest up. This is week two of the regular season we're talking about. Not week 14 when you play 13 other games and a couple of back-to-backs. Like, <laughs> this is the second week of the season. I don't want to hear about fatigue. Like, these guys should be in shape. They should be well-rested. So, yes, we have seen a lot of flashes from this offense. We have seen a lot of flashes from this defense. But right now, they have not played – complimentary football for each other they're not helping each other and if you're not going to help each other then you can't win obviously with them turning the ball over but I think that stops this week well and then you look at what they've been doing like you said they've blitzed a lot lot. they've also come up with the exotic uh, lineups Mm -hmm. where they have people that are Theo Jackson was Mm -hmm. on the line ready to blitz and he ended up making the interception you know 15 yards Mm -hmm. from the line of scrimmage so There's been a lot of smoke and mirrors with this defense. Mm-hmm. But the run totals, like you said, Tampa was able to run the ball. Philadelphia, I don't know if the Eagles and Jalen Hurts were even interested in throwing the ball. Because they're like, okay, we're ahead. We're getting six yards on average every time we hand it off. You know, it wasn't like the Vikings took away the pass mm-hmm. from the Eagles. I think they just found something that worked. They go, oh, this is easy here. Just Let's just keep chewing clock and running the ball. Well, the Eagles is the exception when it comes to talking about the run game because versus the Bucks, Rashard White didn't have any yards. I think the team as a total had about 80 yard, under 80 yards rushing in week one. So, you know, yeah, it, it, it's, it's – You can easily blame the inability to stop the run. Last week, the Eagles just had it their way. I mean, if they wanted to throw the ball, they could throw the ball. There was plastic coverage everywhere. If they wanted to run, they had success running the ball, so why not run the football? Like you said, the defense was on the field for 40 minutes. It's kind of hard to stop the run, but I'm not buying into the fatigue and stuff like that. That just shows that the Vikings did. The Vikings defense, none of the players said that. For sure. But, I mean, it just – they oh, had to we all, we all know, but honestly, that just shows the lack of depth this team has on the defensive front. You know what I'm saying? If you don't have able bodies to rotate in in week two of the football season, I hate to see what's going to happen when it gets really, really cold outside in November and December, and teams are going to say, hey, we're pounding it down your throat. <laughs> and if you can't stop it in week two, good luck in week 15 and 16. All right, so – You look at this situation the Vikings are in. You're talking about the depth. Uh, You can look back at the draft class Hmm. of Kwesi, his first. Yeah. Yeah. This is something that uh, me and a couple of other sportscasters have talked about quite often uh, since we've been down here. So just going down the line of draft picks for Kwesi in his first year. Yep. So Ten picks. Lewisine was his round one pick. He's – not playing at all, actually just got passed up by Theo Jackson. He's the fifth-string safety right now, so that's not a good look. Andrew Booth Jr., he's a special teamers now. He's he's not playing at the cornerback position. He can't get on the field. He can't stay healthy. Ed Ingram, he's playing. He's getting a lot of playing time, (laughs) but he's not doing good with that playing time. So his starting spot may be on the line now that Reisner's here. Brian Asamoah, this is a guy who we all thought was going to be great this season. He's been ousted by the rookie undrafted free agent, 
and yep. Ivan Pace, Pace Jr. Jr. Yep. Yeah, and when Asamoah awesome, did get into the game versus the Eagles, he had one of the lowest um, pass – not passer grades, but one of the lowest – rankings out there power pro football index rankings uh for stopping the run he was like at 30 percent so he did not have a good outing uh, caleb evans he started all right that's one of the lone bright spots he had looked like he gave up a touchdown but that wasn't on him that was a busted coverage by harrison smith and as a defensive back whenever it's not your fault the first thing you do is you turn around and you point as soon as that guy <laughs> scores you're like where were you like that's not yeah, my exactly. fault so uh, caleb evans was letting all us know that wasn't his fault uh azezi atomawe Practice squad, not playing much. Ty Chandler, second string running back, maybe third string if they signed another back. For Darian Lowe, they traded away for like a fourth-round draft pick, fifth-round draft pick. Jalen Naylor, he's not playing at all. And Nick Muse, he's currently on um, uh, the IR, I believe, right now. He's not playing, yeah. or he's not dressing out on game day. So you talk about that draft class, and you talk about the lack of production. Man, that's a lot of swing and misses for Kwesi. Now, that'd be, last year that'd be 10% that success ratio Looking, at this point you can't have a successful competitive rebuild if you're swinging and missing like that on draft picks now i'm not putting quasi on the hot seat this is his second year but if you look at his first draft class man it didn't look good thank god for jordan addison right now he's saving <laughs> he, he looks good in his second draft class but that first one was atrocious yeah and and you know if you're trying to do a competitive rebuild obviously the draft is critical when you have high paid veterans that you want to keep on your roster mm -hmm. And you're going to have to pay even more for a Justin Jefferson. You need cheap help somewhere. It means you need to draft good. And you need to draft really, really good and develop those draft prospects. I think that's what you you haven't seen with the people that Quasi and them drafted last year. There's no there's been no development with like, you know, some of these guys. A uh, Caleb Evans, maybe, but Andrew Booth Jr., Lewis Seen. Andrew Booth, you know, got a couple of reps last year. Lewisine got some reps before he got hurt last year. And now these guys are not even important pieces on the defense. That speaks volumes. The fact that Theo <laughs> Jackson, a guy you just brought in this offseason, and Josh Mattel is a, a special teamers, is now being one of those starting safeties or in the rotation with those heavy safety packages. So, Quasey has to do more homework. Uh, he has to draft better, especially next year, because all eyes are going to be on the quarterback position. And we all know there's only a handful of teams that go to the Super Bowl when you're paying a quarterback over $30 million. So the Vikings have to answer that question. Do they want to pay Kirk Cousins at the end of next year $30 plus million, Or do you want to use I, that money? Is to he go even going to take $30 plus million? If he continues the way yeah. the projectile yeah. is now, he's already number one in the NFL in yards. Mm -hmm. He's tied for touchdown passes. It, it, and granted, the small sample size, right? We always like to use right. that phrase, but it is. And two weeks, this guy, there has been nobody better at winging the football. No. Now, some guys say, well, there are empty stats. He does it when the team is down. Well, he's not the one running the defense. You know? Well, hopefully he won't have to throw the ball as much now that Reisner's coming in. They can kind of balance things out. So maybe that may help Quasi and yeah. yep. when it comes to contract negotiations. But you're, you're right. I mean, Patrick Mahomes just restructured for this deal, and I think he's going to get 50 plus. Plus million yeah. over the next three years. So Kirk is on a you know a, he's, a team he's friendly up there. contract I'm sorry. right now. He is. Uh, but that's a big question that Quasi and Kevin are going to have to answer after this season. And I you know I love Kirk. Don't get me wrong. But I think the pieces need to be perfect around him. And I think the NFL is evolving to like a dual threat style system. As quarterbacks, you got to be athletic, especially when these defensive ends who are 320 pounds but running four four forties. They're fast as the safety on the field. You got to have a quarterback that can get outside the pocket and extend the play and. Uh, Kirk's not that guy, but obviously he's good enough to get them where they need to be this year. He's good enough to get them nine wins and get them a berth in the playoffs, especially in the NFC, because eight or nine wins will get you there. The NFC South is really bad. The North yep. looks like it's going to be pretty bad outside of the Lions, maybe. So I think nine wins still get you to the playoffs. So I think Kirk is good enough this season, so we don't have to speculate about next season just yet. All right, so uh, we say it's a must win on Sunday do they win on Sunday? You have 30 seconds. If they don't turn the ball over, they win. Because if they don't turn the ball over in the previous two weeks, they win. I think you don't rely on the defense to get stops. It's going to be a shootout. That's what we said in the offseason when they didn't address anything defensively, was that, that the Vikings are going to have to outscore people in 2023. So I think as long as they don't turn the ball over, they win. But if they have two-plus turnovers, the Chargers are going to win on the final possession of the game. All right. Thanks for joining us. Uh, you have comments, put them right here. Let us know. And we want to make this, you know, for you, the Viking fan. For Ahmad Hicks, I'm Jim Rich. We will see you next time.